Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna continue our talk with the physics section. So let's get started. We'll go on physics, go to mesh collider. So uh, let me actually enable this door, or you know what, sorry about that. Let me actually use something a little more complex. Go to the scene. Okay. So for this tree right here, as you can see, we got this capsule collider, which is perfectly fine because unless you have a, a game where you're you're gonna climb this tree or you're gonna affect any part of this tree on top, it's perfectly fine just to have a capsule collider on the bottom. That way your characters could collide with the tree. But let's say you wanted to actually add a collider to cover this whole tree because for some reason this was gonna be the only tree in your scene. So you weren't really worried about um, having so much mesh colliders because with the mesh collider it does take more performance for the computer so it will slow down your computer if you have a bunch of mesh colliders so for all these trees it would probably slow down the scene a little bit if they all had mesh colliders but let's just say this was the only one so what you could do is you would add this mesh collider and you click convex and as you can see it actually takes the whole tree and it tries to generate a collider. Now this might not be so great of an example. So let me go to the rocks and let me go to like this one. Now this rock's huge. So now we have this, this rock and we also have this mesh collider. Now when we convex it, as you can see, it tries its best to, to, to actually make a collider from the model. So as you can see, here's the mesh or the model. So if I click here and I go up, you can see this is the actual model that I'm using, same one. So technically I could grab this tree and I could add this mesh into this option. So I take the mesh into this option. And as you can see, it generates the collider uh, that the, that is in this mesh, no matter what the model might be at the moment. So I could even add, let's say a box collider, but we can't really see it, but it's probably underneath. So can't really see it, but yeah, there, there's a box collider somewhere here. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the mesh collider. You could also set it to his trigger. So if you set this to his trigger, I could walk right through it. So like it won't collide with anything, but the reason for having this is that it will send a, you will be able to write a code or a script that makes something happen. You will be able to write a code or a script that will make something happen when, you know, anything walks through it. So like this, where my player walked through the, the rock or whatever, or is touching the rock, I could send a message through code or through script saying, you know what, do this or do that. And it's, it's a simple uh, function or method that it's, on trigger enter there's also on trigger stay there's also on trigger exit and those are just uh, functions that you use that unity provides for us to be able to call you know certain events or certain things to happen and then uh, there's also cooking options so if you want to have uh, none for cooking for uh, when you're baking a scene or whatever uh, we can have it uh, cook everything, cook uh, for faster simulation, you know, enable mesh cleaning, all that stuff. And then uh, we could also add physics materials. So i um, pretty sure I've mentioned this in a bunch of videos, but uh, you could make physics materials. So you would just right click, go to create and click on um, physics material. Uh, for 2D, they have a 2D physics material, but of course you have to have a 2D project open and then just click on uh, your physics material and then you could add friction or bounciness. Friction is um, an extra form of friction. Friction kind of adds a little slide to, to a surface. So if you wanted a sliding surface or whatever that, or whatever like that uh, would be uh, friction. Now dynamic is if it's moving, static if it's just staying still. So if there's a character staying still, uh, it will give us like a slippery effect even though it's not moving dynamic if it's moving it'll just you know add more friction or slipperiness bounciness of course if you want an object object to bounce up and down and then friction combine and bounce combine 
what happens is it takes both physics material. So let's say the ground had one and this rock had one. It would take both of them and it would get either the minimum of both of those, the average of both of those, it will multiply both of those or it will just take the maximum. So if this one had zero and this one had one on the floor, since this is mi minimum, it would take the rock instead of the, the actual floor. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'm going to cover this a little more in detail in a separate video. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty sure that's it for the for this mesh collider. Yep. Let me see if we have more time. I'm just going to cut it here. That way it could be short videos. I think people prefer that. If not, let me know. I'll make it more detailed. If you guys need it to be more detailed, let me know in the comments below. Um, also, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. It does mean a lot to me. It does help me. Helps this channel. Helps me keep motivated. And yeah, once again, thank you.